unsafe mode. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Yeah, it looked like it worked. Oh yeah, that doesn't look right. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know what? I'm doing pretty great today too because we're gonna have some fun with Linux. Yes, I know so many of you love Linux and you know what? I do too, kinda sorta. So, here's the story. I have some people in my family that don't have their own computer, but you know, they're not really in the situation to drop a lot of money on a computer. So, I came across a bunch of old Lenovo notebooks and even the Samsung Chromebook, which we may get back to in a future tech video log. And I decided, you know what, let's just give these away to people that need a computer, right? However, there's no system software on this thing. In fact, there's no system software on any of these notebooks except for the Chromebook, which I'm locked out of anyway, and I'll get into that later. So right now we just have our little bio screen. So earlier, I asked you awesome techies what I should install on the system. I ran a quick poll on Twitter and Zoran OS was clearly the winner, so that's what we're gonna be installing on this Lenovo today. But, I did get a bunch of other replies as well, so I do appreciate that. Everybody that sent in their own reply, thank you very, very much. But today, Zoran OS is our king, so let's get started. But first, you must smell your tomato. Sorry, that was a obscure reference. Let's take a look at the specs of this thing. And, uh, Four gigs of RAM. I can see what what our hard disk is here, but I don't see like any specifications. Let's see. All right, so memory as we established four gigs, storage, this is what I want. Okay, we're looking at about a half a terabyte here, so that's good. I looked on the bottom of this thing and it has a Windows 8 Pro sticker, I believe. Some kind of Windows 8 sticker, so probably had that on here at one time, but it has since been wiped out. So let's grab a Zoran OS image and I'm gonna throw it, hopefully successfully onto this flash drive because there is no optical drive on this computer, but a lot of computers are ditching that nowadays anyway, so that's understandable. Shutting down. For now. Now, it has been a millennium since I have touched Zorn OS, but I actually did use version, f no, not four, version eight and version 12 on Software Showcase quite a while ago if you wanna check those out. So yeah, what version are they even on now? I have no idea, let's take a look, but Again, I mean, Zorn OS is one of the nicer Linux distributions I have used, despite it being a long time. I think there is like a paid version. Yeah, 19 euros, Zorn OS 12.3 Ultimate. But again, we'll just stick with Core because this is a free computer I'm just giving away. <sighs> I'm pretty sure that's a 64-bit system. I mean, it came, that Lenovo came out in 2014, right? So. Pretty sure we're on a 64-bit architecture. So that's got about 17 seconds left. I'm thinking just, we're gonna download Etcher right from their webpage, and we'll just use that to flash the image onto this flash drive. Let's just actually start downloading that now. Burn better. Download from Mac OS. So we got Etcher and Zorin, let's do this. Etcher by Resin.io. .io seems to be a growing TLD, yes. All right, one of my favorite things about Mac OS is how you install most applications. You just do that. Pretty simple. Me gusta. Let's go open Etcher, which looks like a, like a vinyl, so you can wiki wiki, like your favorite DJ. Looks pretty simple, huh? I like it when things are simple. Now, in goes the flash drive. This flash drive has been used pretty much only for like boot camp drivers, like in its entire life. <laughs> now it will be used for something else, <laughs> Linux. Yes, so select drive, can we just drag it in? Actually, wait, that's not the step we're on yet, sorry. Select image, can we drag it in? Yes, we can. Can we drag the drive in? Doesn't look like we can, but we can do it from here. All right, yep, that's the Kingston. Um, will it automatically format it? Because right now we're looking at you know, an HFS plus J partition, but hang on, before I press any buttons, I'm gonna check some stuff because I don't wanna do stupid stuff like I did in that hard drive recovery video where I was making the tech video log and I was so wrapped up into it, I was pressing wrong buttons everywhere. I really screwed up. And the comment section let me know that. Now I'm gonna read stuff and make sure I do stuff correctly like a man. Okay, I just 
triple check the web page and it said nothing about format specifications, but I'm guessing once we flash it, it'll automatically format. Let's hit continue and DC's flash. Oh, password. Don't look. I typed it in wrong. I can't type on an angle. Okay, that's gotta be it. Are you shitting me? The cleaning ladies like change my password? Okay, 7%, 8%. It even gives us little like bit rates and ETAs. 92, 93, 94. The suspense is boring me. Just kidding. It's flashing the audience. It's kind of inappropriate and it's finishing. Oh, now it's validating my parking. You know, this makes me miss, like, the old Aqua. You know, from Mac OS, the old, like, diagonal lines, like the barber pole. Yeah, good times. The disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. Good. I think that's normal. And we can flash another if we want to. All right, fab. So, let's say ignore. <laughs> Unsafe mode. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> oh, what, is, what does that mean? Oh, you have, you've totally piqued my curiosity. So let's try the option key thing. Let's just shut her down. EFI boot. Huh. Oh shit, yeah, it worked. This is the Zorin OS menu. It's just really tiny because this is a really high res display. Yeah, it looked like it worked. Okay, let's shut it down and switch to the ThinkPad. Okay, this thing is pumped full of Zorin juice. Let's plug her in. Now they said you typically press escape. I don't know if that's how it is on this. Oh, it just said I think press, oh, hang on, no, it, that's it. So, okay, that was way freaking easier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I just jinxed it. Now everything's gonna explode in my face. Yeah, let's do, let's do the live mode first to make sure this actually like performs well. Wow, I love it when things just do the thing they're supposed to do. Holy balls, Zorn, you made it easy. And Etcher. There's that beautiful startup screen. I kind of always like the sci-fi-ish kind of look that Zorin has. Very, very sci-fi-y. Looks like we have a mouse cursor, but it's still loading. And here we are on the desktop. All right, I wanna adjust some settings here. Yeah, interesting, so we got that working. And the trackpad on this thing actually, the whole thing clicks like a button, kind of like the Apple notebooks. It just, it feels way cheaper, definitely, but the whole thing does act as a button. But yeah, cool. Looks like we're up and running. And looky here, our brightness control actually works. Look at that. Things work. And the sound works. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, yeah, the function keys, I actually just realized I have to press the function button probably. Let's see if that works. Oh, hell yeah. Brightness. Yes. Look at that. Kind of like the Mac HUD there. Beautiful. Beautiful. All those keys are just working right out of box. Another thing I like to do to test is I just like to drag a window around just to see if it tears. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. No, I'm not seeing any tearing there. Beautiful. I like that. Well, Zorin, well, I'm glad the people voted for you on Twitter. You are bae. So, let's now run the actual installer and get a copy of this freshly installed on the hard disk. Then we'll have fun experimenting with some of the features and configuring the settings. Welcome, English. Yes, English is good, I speak English. Ah, the Wi-Fi, perfect. Let's hop on. It's even automatically detecting the Wi-Fi. I love it when things work, I'm such a happy Ken. Continue. Download updates while installing Zorin, yes please. Install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Yes, might as well, right? Okay. Erase disk and install Zorin. Might as well, I mean, there's, there's literally nothing else on this computer. So let's do that. Write the changes to this disk. We have one device, two partitions, one for swap, one that's extended for, looks good to me. Where are you? Chicago. Which again, is not that far south. That seems to be a, a common recurring thing that, that's more like, I don't know, that's probably like near Atlanta. That's not Chicago. We'll just say Chicago. We just need the central time zone. Okay, English, US. Yes, sir. I instinctively almost wanted to click on Macintosh because I usually don't have a PC to install Linux stuff on. And by the way, I got like a crap ton of these notebooks so I could use them for other things, but I'm only finding one power cord. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to dig around some more, maybe buy some on eBay. 
because if I give this one away to somebody, well, the power cord's gonna go with it. We're just gonna call it Zorn PC one Username, Crazy Ken, why not? It's gonna get wiped out later anyway. And we're copying files. Let's expand that if it lets us. So we can watch the fun log stuff scroll by. And here we go. So far, so good. Looks like we're climbing along on the scroll bar down there, or on the progress bar, I should say. This is probably the most use this flash drive has got in a long time. Oh yeah, and apparently the ThinkPad logo got ripped off and just the red light is here and someone taped over it. <laughs> Oh well, what a shame. It's gonna be a free computer, it's fine. Started cleanup of temporary directories, yes. Oh, my favorite. And the screen went dark. I'm guessing, oh, it locked on me. Well, now we know what the lock screen looks like. You just drag it up, kind of like a uh, Windows 8. Oh, it's stuck. Well, it is running off a of flash drive, so we're probably going a bit slower than normal. There we go. All right, looks like it should be done pretty soon. Installation complete. We can GLaDOS continue testing or restart now. And I like the restart now option. Oops, I missed it. This trackpad's a little weird, especially on an angle. And here we go. Start a daemon for power management. That's always good. I don't know if these are supposed to be like lined up, but it looks like they're kind of scattered all over. Please remove installation medium, then press enter. All right, flash drive, you've done your duty. Thank you very much for your service. And enter. ThinkPad. And there's the Zorn logo. I can hear the hard drive working. It's loading off there. Let's see how fast it boots up. Nice little pulsating glow. It is also a first boot, so it might be a tad slow. And we're at the desktop. So yeah, that was probably about a minute. Not terrible, considering it's a it's not an SSD, it's a mechanical disk, and the computer is about four years old, so not too shabby. Here's our menu. Here's all of our stuff. There's Crazy Ken. Yeah, looks like it's working. Wi-Fi, let's see. Yep, it's still on Deep 13. Fully charged battery. User account, Crazy Ken. Let's go back to our brightness. I think it was right around there. And we got our sound. Oops, something's automatically adjusting the brightness. Is there a sensor on here, or is it just... Bugging out on me. <laughs> Got a little sound. Cool. And let's open up Chromium, which is our default web browser. This is basically going to be a web browsing computer. I think Flash is also installed on here because I had that option checked during the installation. Now, I know Flash is like hardly used anymore. It kind of, you know, is dying out, but there's going to be that one time you need it, right? <laughs> um, okay, it doesn't look like it opened. Let's try that one more time. Maybe I didn't even click it. Oh, the Windows key is our, looks like our desktop switcher and our search. Now I know that. Oh, change, wait, choose password from you. Oh, default key ring. Oh, okay, yes, it looks like it opened. I might've opened up Chromium twice. Nope, just once. Yeah, it was going a little slow. But yeah, it's here. Oh, they have their own custom Google search thing. Okay, new tab, wait. Oh, don't know what that was, but okay. Computer clan. Kind of digging their little custom thing here. And the space bar. Does the space bar not work like a MacBook Pro? Or does the space bar just, like, is that not supported in here? I don't know. And there's results for computer clan. Let's go to our website. There we go. Bon appetit. Looks like it's working, right? We can do a two-finger scroll on here as well. We can scroll with the arrow keys. Looks like it's smooth. It's performing just fine. Man, we gotta, oh my gosh, we gotta update this thing. Like we are way over 75,000 subscribers. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that'll, that'll be taken care of. Cool. So yep, that looks like our app switcher, Windows key, or I guess this would be the super key now, Windows key, super key tab. Let's explore a little more. What else we got in here? Looks like we have wine. If you have wine bottled Windows apps, you can run them on here. For system and video, we have the video player, which is probably, I don't know, it might be X player. Rhythm box, Cheese, guessing that's like a photo booth application. I'm actually curious, uh, for sound and video, if Cheese works with the webcam out of box. It does, all right. Yo, Half-Life 2 shirt. All right, impressive. Well, you got a little behind the scenes 
look there, I suppose. All right, it works out of box. That's good to know. Looks like we have some updates showing up here, too. Updated software has been issued since Zorn OS 12 was released. Do you want to install it now? Details. This, yes, there's a, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Yes, let's do that. Let's just get everything on here. Beautiful password prompt. Like, totally out of, like, a sci-fi movie or something. You know, that's probably why I actually use Zorin OS as the inspiration, I almost said installation, as the inspiration for an old sci-fi film I was doing called Revision. It got canceled. But anyway, anytime I needed, like, computer screens, I actually, like, based the designs off of Zorin. And I even used some Zorin screenshots. I just thought it had a nice sci-fi-esque appearance. All right, let's just take a look at some customization. So right now, this is what we're using, which kind of gives us, like, a Windows 7 style panel. And it looks like this mode gives us more of like a traditional Windows taskbar type of appearance. And then this mode, is this more, is this Unity? I honestly don't remember the name of this. Yeah, I guess virtual desktops are on this side, but uh, yeah, I don't see anything open on the sides. Maybe those panels are disabled, but yeah, I'll just keep it at this for now. Again, I'll change whatever I want just for fun, but when the new owner gets this computer, they're gonna basically have a, a new account so they can change their stuff anyway. Uh, ooh, is this a dark mode? It's a dark mode, oh my gosh. I'm so happy, I love dark modes. Oh. Yeah, you can change the colors, you can change light mode, dark mode, and then we have our panel here. So you can be a top or you can be a bottom. That's your preference, I suppose. We can make it really thick, just like we did in that Linux Mint video. Oh yeah, that's like totally overkill. <laughs> uh, opacity. Oh yeah, there's opacity there. Would you look at that? Oh, because that was a full screen window. That's why it went black. So yeah, that is kind of like how Vista did it back in the day. But yeah, there's opacity there. Beautiful. That looks good. Show desktop button. That actually might be handy. So you can just go over here, click that. There's your desktop. Animations lag a little bit, but again, it's a much older computer. There is no discrete chipset in here. Oh, little preview panels, kind of like uh, your old Vista. Windows Vista. Let's bring that thickness back down. Gosh, this trackpad is horrible. I might just use the pointer stick, which, oh, f there's the pointer stick. Woo! Just kind of driving the cursor around. Some people call it the herpes, the herpes controller, you know, the herpes button. Let's take a look at background. I usually like to put my own backgrounds on this stuff anyway, but let's look at what's on the system. You know what I think when I see this, though? I totally think of like Mac OS X Lion where they have a photo of Andromeda. That's kind of the flashback I'm getting right now. But yeah, I think that looks cool, right? Nice little dark mode, galaxy wallpaper, I dig it. What games are pre-installed on here? Mahjong, oh yeah, I have no idea how to play that. <laughs> Mines, that's, I know that one. I think if you get Ultimate, you get a lot more games. Let's see, Office Applications, yes, we have LibreOffice. Let's play some Mines, let's do, yeah, 99 mines, 30 by 16. I too like to live dangerously. <laughs> or however the quote goes. Okay, let's click. Are there supposed to be numbers there? I just see white squares. Usually there's like numbers that show up, right? Maybe this difficulty mode doesn't like numbers. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Let's try this. Yeah, it's not giving me any numbers. Minesweeper was like the first game I ever played on Windows, by the way. In fact, the first thing I ever did on Windows was play Minesweeper. I was at Camp Snoopy. <laughs> and I'm, I was very young. I met this guy with a laptop, and I think he was on, like, Windows 95 or Windows 98, and he showed me Minesweeper. That was my first interaction with Windows, I believe. I really don't know how this is supposed to work. It's not showing numbers, and I'm not seeing any mines anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I've lost interest. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to let it finish installing those updates, and then we'll uh, just fiddle around with a little bit more. But overall, this installation sensation was pretty straightforward. Okay, so this thing just spazzed out, went to sleep mode, and then woke up and typed in a crazy long password. I think uh, one of the keys is stuck down. Oh, great. Let's try that again. And we're good. Restart now. Heck yeah, boy. Oh yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not wrapping that text properly, but oh well. Okay, so one more test I'd like to do here is just a little bit of web browsing. Something that a lot of people would do, aside from like checking their email or Facebook or whatever, let's say browsing on YouTube. So let's see how this works with YouTube. Okay, can we like not do this? Let's just abort that. And let's go to YouTube. Man, when you click, look at that cursor jump. That's horrible. That is a very bad design, but again, very cheap, very cheap computer. What shall we watch? Oh, hey, well the thumbnail 
previews apparently work just fine in Chromium here. That's good. Let's watch uh, one of our favorite videos, the Mac Screens of Death. Greetings, Internet. I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today I'm going to show... Sorry, just had to reboot there for a second. Anyway. Well, it looks like it loaded just fine. The speaker isn't that terrible considering it's a really cheap computer. But yeah, I mean, it loads, it works. Updates were installed and now rebooted. It feels like it's just working a lot better now. Yeah. Greetings. Videos instantly load. Let's try high definition for fun, 1080p. Yep. Greetings, Internet. I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today we're going to talk about these. Perfect. Yeah, not not too sluggish. I mean, a little bit of painting there, but yeah, it's... For what it is, I would say this is fine. I think this will make a person that doesn't have a computer fairly happy. It's better than nothing, right? Now, just as a quick side note, remember what I said earlier. Hoi! Yeah. I got a bunch of these just lying around doing nothing. So, again, I'm open to ideas. I mean, is there any other software you want to see me install? Maybe something you want me to experiment with? They're just doing nothing, so if you have any ideas of, like, what I can do with these computers, feel free to let me know. And I also have to hold up my end of the bargain to that little bet I made with another viewer about installing a Windows beta on physical hardware which might be able to be done with these notebooks. Uh, again, open to suggestions on that. And I'm open to suggestions as to what Windows beta I should install because I've never actually done that on physical hardware before, only virtualized. So yeah, just uh, drop me a line down below. Yeah, success guys, I'm calling this a win. Thank you people that were getting rid of this Lenovo. <laughs> I, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And thank you Zorn for being so easy to use and so easy to install. And thank you awesome tech community for voting on Zorin. So, catch the crazy and pass it on.